Uh, I think I watch through all of Red versus Blue uh, multiple times per year. Um, I have like a, we don't have like a Bible for the show uh, like most shows do, but I have my own version of the Bible, which is I just take notes on every rewatch and it gets longer and longer and longer and I highlight things in the show um, that um, I haven't noticed before, you know. And I well, I'm not entirely sure what show Joe's watching because all the continuity errors that he's had in his last two seasons and all the character mistakes not to mention everything that I feel like he's missed as he's gone through the show. Multiple times writing everything down, I have no idea what he wrote down. You see, if you're going to do a season about time travel, make sure you notice everything. I mean, in past seasons, people that didn't face the time travel, they at least didn't try to contradict the fact that it existed. You've knowingly had food within arm's reach and haven't eaten it yet? I have been hiding it since basic training, Simmons. Wait, but that would mean it was years old. How many years? Let's not get into specifics. Let's just say it's old. But when you talk about time travel straight up, make sure you got everything. This is what I wrote down. As a fan of Red vs. Blue, I come up with a lot of theories. In my last video, I explained why I feel like time travel exists in Red vs. Blue before Season 15, but I never explained what happened. The first time Red vs. Blue actually openly uses time travel is in Season 3. The Reds and Blues have finally teamed up, and they're about to go after O'Malley, who has Lopez. Inside Lopez is that weather machine, but at that moment, Church has a 10 megaton bomb in his gut and Wyoming is about to shoot Tucker because Tucker learned that the Reds and Blues are all the same and it's some big conspiracy that's being covered up. So basically then suddenly everything changes because the bomb in Church's gut explodes and everyone's thrown into a time vortex. I don't want to be dead! I want to be alive! Or a cowboy! And then wake up in the future. New armor, new guns, and the Reds and Blues find themselves in the middle of the desert so the Reds and Blues are in the future, with Tex, O'Malley, and Lopez's head. <laughs> While Church is in the past. While Church is in the past, he meets this computer on the wall named Gary. But then Gary tells Church about a great destroyer, which he implies is Caboose. So Church now wants to try to stop Caboose from killing everybody and becoming the great destroyer. Meaning that at one point in the future, the Reds and Blues would be trying to stop O'Malley by planting a bomb in a temple he's staying in. An important temple. And Caboose being the one to plant the bomb would be the one inevitably to kill everybody because they accidentally locked themselves inside. He's told by Gary to wait in the hallway while he builds a teleporter. And he stands there for a thousand years, supposedly. And once he's done with the teleporter, he's sent to Blood Gulch. Tries to undo a lot of those situations. And he ends up constantly failing and being blown back in time again to the same hallway with Gary creating a whole bunch of clones of himself based off of time loop. They basically try to rationalize what just happened, and according to Sarge... We represent the timeline. I am the past! And I am the future. And I'm the present, which sucks. You and your buddy Church set off a bomb, which when combined with the weather machinery in Lopez, made an explosion so large it destroyed the present. Yeah, you see, luckily Church was facing forward when the bomb went off, and we were standing in front of him, so that sent us forward into the future. Don't you see? If Church was facing forward during the explosion, and that blew us into the future, that could mean that he was blown backward into the... This obviously makes no sense. That's the theory the Reds and Blues go with. When Church meets Gary in the hallway in the past, Gary tells him he's early and he's not supposed to be there for another 1,856 years. And then Church stands in the hallway waiting for the teleporter for a thousand years, and then shows up in Blood Gulch, which tells me that when the bomb went off, it threw the Reds and Blues 856 years into the future with their original theory. And then they try to use 6, 7, and 8 to retcon that to what a lot of people believe as didn't actually happen. My guess is, Wyoming probably took Church to the past because he had the bomb in his stomach and he was about to explode. This would be the perfect time to make everyone think he was dead so no one would look for him. Giving the director 
of Project Freelance are the perfect chance to get Church back, Church being the alpha and all. We first see Wyoming in the red base on Sidewinder. That's the first time we ever see Wyoming. And he keeps trying to ask one of the soldiers there, Phil, where the plans are. So I think he was sent there to do a freelancer training exercise. Also, as an ulterior motive, to pick up Church. I believe Wyoming was sent there to pick him up because he left Blood Gulch with Griff and everyone else when they were teleported away. And the director clearly wouldn't want him to leave, especially to go to Sidewinder. At least he doesn't kill everyone who suits up for your team. Oh, yeah, I don't think I really did that. Then who did? Okay, stick with me on this, right? What if Church traveled back in time using Wyoming's special ability power? God, shut up. While Caboose said it, I feel like a lot of the times when Caboose says stuff like that, they're using Caboose as an exposition machine, and because he's stupid, people just assume what he's saying makes no sense, therefore is dumb. But really, it's just telling us what's what's actually happening. Yeah, and even though we all blame the tank, kind of feel like Church had a little something to do with it too. Wyoming took Church to the freelancer base on Sidewinder in the past. We saw in Season 8 that the Garrett computer screen was in the hallway at the base that Church and Tex were infiltrating while they were talking about the process of the AI being split. Gamma and Omega would fabricate scenarios where he was designed to fail. And they made it seem like his failures were hurting all of the people he cared about, and there was nothing he could do about it. It drove him mad, broke him down even more. To inevitably just split and create a fragment. Now that sounds a lot like what Church went through when he was sent back in time to that hallway, constantly going through time loop after time loop, and eventually fragmenting. Which, you know, I believe, Yellow Church is actually an AI fragment, but I'll get back to that another time. If Church wasn't sent a thousand years into the past and was actually sent back in time by Wyoming, I'd have to guess the time he was sent to was probably between the moment where Flowers was building the Reds and Blues for Blood Gulch and the moment where Captain Flowers died. Because Season 8 basically pointed out that everything the Reds and Blues dealt with were simulations, most fans believe that the time loop Church was in was faked by Gary. I believe the time loop that Church was in was actually real. Wyoming sent Church to the past and put him into the computer with Gary. If Wyoming at the end of Season 5's time loop is real, then why wouldn't the other time loop be real? It doesn't make any sense. It would definitely explain all the Church robots in Season 8 and the off-site storage facility. After Church escaped the time loop, that's probably where they were put. As far as the rules for the time travel, it would seem that when someone tried to change something in the past, inevitably they end up causing the event. But this scene kind of disproves that. Right. Then I teleported back to Sidewinder and thought, if I can shoot Wyoming before he shoots Tucker, then I can fix everything. But I shot Wyoming, then Tucker shot me with the rocket launcher, the bomb went off anyway, and I got sent back in time. And then I teleported back and just decided to kill everybody that I could see. But in my opinion, it seems like every time something was changed, or every time Church ended up causing something that already happened, there was a reason it happened in the first place. Such as when Captain Flowers died, it was said he had a heart attack, but then Church killed him with aspirin. Or when Church got blown up by the tank because Caboose killed him with the friendly fire option, it's not hard to believe that they sent the tank to Blood Gulch with a different name and different settings, specifically so when Church tried to change that, he ended up causing it to happen in the first place. And as far as Church and Griff being stuck in the prison on Sidewinder, Right before Church and Griff were freed, Church was about to show Griff his ability to be a ghost, so he probably, in the original timeline, would have used his ghost powers to get them out. And then, when he got stuck in the time loop, he let himself out, making it seem like he let himself out in the first place. If the time loop Church was stuck in was fake, then who let Church and Griff out of the prison in the first place? All that stuff with the lava pit and the hallways that Church was in was a simulation. That was a fake world. Gary sounds and looks 8-bit, and it's Alpha's deceit. So if anything about the time loop was simulated, it would be the scenes in Marathon, the game they used to represent the past that Church was thrown into. Such as Church waiting in the hallway for a thousand years, and Gary building a teleporter for Church to teleport, when really it was just the time distortion unit that Wyoming uses. When Church finally escaped the time loop, the reason he showed up in the future at the windmill instead of in the desert with the guys was because, I think, He's an AI, and even though he didn't know he was an AI, he had the ability to control the time distortion, like Gary. As for the reds and blues, I don't think they were thrown into the future. I think time was distorted around them. Realistically, the reds and blues probably only went a few months into the future, not 856 years. 
In the original five seasons, Wyoming only ever used the time distortion to loop through time, and it was never until recreation that it was shown to have distortion abilities because the meta was using it, like slowing down, speeding up, and all that stuff, pausing time. And I think it was introduced into Season 6 so that they could use that to retcon some of the time travel. Here's one thing that I've never heard anyone talk about. And it's weird, because there's a whole scene about it. Now I want you to look at this picture. Oh, hey! I know where that is! Which of the following best describes this picture? Would you say it is A. The new location where your team was assigned B. The source of a mysterious energy reading Or C. That's just where we landed! Where you landed. Can you elaborate? Yeah, we were defusing a bomb by this guy Omega, but then the bomb went off and it was such a huge explosion that it totally threw us into the future and we landed there in that place. I'm not sure I understand. The future? That kind of indicates that Project Freelancer didn't have any idea what was going on with the time travel. Maybe they know that Wyoming has the time distortion unit, obviously, but doesn't seem like from that sentence that they knew the reds and blues were just thrown into the future. I don't have a checkbox for that. Another piece of evidence that kind of goes with that whole thing. So, then after that, they transferred me to that new base. I guess we left before we were supposed to do what they wanted us to. That's a pretty crazy story, Donut. Your friend from Red Team described a location nearby with a strange energy source. Oh, that's where Tucker is. The Freelance Project found a source of intense energy, so a scenario team was sent to investigate the area. But they left without doing anything. They sound dumb. Indeed. This place sounds like the location of the energy source. You should go there and investigate. We can explain more when the opportunity arises. Okay, I can help you do that. The fact that the counselor, while talking to Donut, shows him the picture of the Great Burning Plains and says that that's the place where they were sent to investigate a mysterious energy reading. And later on, it's mentioned that the, the dig site in Season 7 and 8 is where a mysterious energy reading was sent, tells me that those are the same locations, if not the exact same location, the same desert areas near each other. You see, it sounds like, according to the counselor, the Reds and Blues were doing stuff before they were sent to the desert, not woken up in the desert, but sent to the desert. How could the Reds and Blues be sent to the desert by command if they were at that moment being sent into the future to the desert? I think they were sent to the desert by command, but they were viewing time so fast they thought they were teleported. But really, they were living life at normal speed. I feel like the show has evidence of this kind of thing being able to happen. In Season 6, we find out Tex's ship that she was in at the end of Season 5 that exploded crashed on a base called Valhalla. But we find out it took a year to crash. What's wrong with you? Why didn't you tell us we could use equipment? Why didn't you tell me that Wyoming was on the ship? He listens to the, the crash logs in the ship, and it seems like it instantly crashed. So that makes it sound like she took a year to crash because time distortion was taking place. Caboose even says, Maybe that's why the ship took a year to crash. Another moment of Caboose using exposition to explain the situation. But because he's stupid, no one thinks that that's actually what's going on. And in Season 8, Doc and Simmons are held prisoner by Wash in the Meta at Valhalla. And then their plan to get out of that is for Doc's gun to overcharge and shoot a blast out of it to hit the Meta. And when he does this... You did it! It's frozen! No, it looks like you overloaded his time distortion unit. You must have caused some kind of inversion. Instead of making everything else slow, it made him slow. Oh <laughs> yeah! Score one for the pacifists! How you like me now, Meta? Um, Doc, I wouldn't get too close to him if I were you. Why? What's he gonna do? Beat me up over the course of the next two weeks? Well, technically he's not actually moving slower. He's moving at the same speed, just over a longer period of time. Huh? It's relativistic. His fist still travels at the same velocity. We just view it from a faster time frame. That happened because Doc's gun sent an explosion. There's a serious theme of explosions around time distortion units. The bomb on Sidewinder exploded and the reds and blues were distorted to the future. The bomb on the ship exploded, Andy the bomb, and Tex's ship took a year to crash while she thought it took an instant. The explosion from Doc's gun inverted the Meta's time distortion unit. And the fact that Simmons is the one to explain the time distortion conversion thing to Doc... See? That's what you get for arguing with science, stupid bitch.
bitch. Makes me even more upset as to why Simmons mentions that time travel doesn't exist in season 15. He knows there's science behind distorting time and altering time. Hell, in season 5... How did you even get here? We're in the future! Hmm, I think I know how. Did you use your hyperdrive to get here or just the light drive? Which one is the hippie drive? She probably came here just using the light drive. And as Einstein theorized in his theory of relativity... English. When you travel near the speed of light, time slows down for you. Essentially, she came forward in time by traveling at light speed. That's stupid. No, that's science. The fact that he doesn't know it exists or even thinks it exists in season 15 goes against his character. But, even though Simmons came up with a theory on how Sister came 856 years into the future, the fact that they didn't actually go that far into the future indicates that she probably just came to Blood Gulch regularly in the ship, not through time travel using light speed. Lopez, however, was thrown into the future. I think that because he had the weather machine in his gut, and the time distortion affected the weather machine creating a wormhole pulling him through and dropping him in the future. That's the only reason I could come up with as to why he would just be ahead. Now one thing that kind of gets in the way of the theory is when the bomb blows up on Sidewinder, it's a 10 megaton bomb according to Sarge. How the hell did the Reds and Blues not die from that? But no, there's not something in the way of that because, as I said earlier, the time distortion unit was used by Wyoming to loop through time every time he failed. And if the Beaver Creek base is actually the testing ground for the temporal distortion unit, well, that's the explanation right there. The time distortion unit, when it distorted because of the bomb, reversed the death of the Reds and Blues. Just like the Red and Blue Grunt's deaths were reversed, and just like how Andy the Bomb survived himself exploding at the end of Season 5. I wish any of this had been noticed when 15 and 16 were in production. If it had, I feel like the story probably would have worked out a lot better. I definitely think it'd be a good story with time travel serving the plot instead of the plot serving time travel. And like I said earlier, the next piece of the puzzle is Yellow Church. The secret AI fragment 